Okay, so I am trying this lab again with sound this time. Uh, so again, the key to this is this is just kind of a, an intro to doing labs. Uh, we did the lab safety. I'm not going to focus on that in this video. Uh, I'm going to focus on completing the lab and what we're looking for in the lab report. Uh, the key thing we're looking for uh, when we're doing chemistry labs is going to be our observations. Um, again, when we looked at the difference between physical and chemical properties, physical and chemical changes, uh, well, how we knew if it was going to be a chemical change is if we saw a change of color, if we saw gas creation, so bubbling or fizzing. Uh, it's going to include if we saw, oh, my brain hurts right now, um, right, if there was any ignition source, heat created, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for primarily color changes and for uh, gas creation. And that's going to tell us chemical changes happened. And when we write our lab report, it's a chemistry lab report. And of course, chemical changes of what we're interested in. So this is going to be a lab in practicing how to write observations. And when we do our lab report, and when it comes time to do our discussions and we discuss what happened in the lab, that's where we discuss those changes. So our observations come straight into our discussion. So it's going to be very important to note your uh, any observations. So uh, I'm just going to run through this real quick here. We're going to measure 350 milliliters of water into a 600 milliliter beaker. I have already done that. Look at that. Here we go. Uh, I did not erase that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to measure out three to five mils of universal indicator. So again, the universal indicator for your intro, you should be looking up what it is, what it does. So it's an acid base indicator. It has colors for the entire rainbow for all pHs from one through 14. So I have the water here. I add the indicator. Now, normally we don't add this much. I like adding this much because it just makes the color a little more vibrant. So I added this, uh, you can see it's going nice green and there's, you can see some yellow in there, which is what we should see from a universal indicator in water because we should see that with the Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, the middle colors should be neutral. So we should see green, yellow kind of tinges when we have water. Um, the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to measure out 100 milliliters of water into a beaker and we are going to add in 0.5 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets. So I've already got that going. Of course, that would be um, our first observation is when we added the universal indicator to water, we saw a color change of yellow. In our discussions, we'll discuss why we saw that. Um, so I guess you mix this up just a little. Uh, so now I got the sodium hydroxide here inside um, my solution, water solution, and I'm just going to slowly pour that in here and see what happens. Ah, our next observation is it changed color to purple. So why did it change purple? Again, we're going to look at the universal indicator for that. We're going to look at the sodium hydroxide. Uh, so what is it? How did it turn the universal indicator purple? That's going to be important. Um, next thing we're going to do then is we are going to add this entire solution into our tall graduated cylinder. Uh, nothing really to note in our observations there. We just dumped it in. Uh, we just changed containers. Uh, so now we have this container, we are going to add an Alka-Seltzer tablet. So I just got an Alka-Seltzer, which we should again look up because it's one of the key chemicals uh, for our observation, or sorry, introduction. So we're going to say what is Alka-Seltzer in our introduction and we can discuss it here as I drop. So it broke into pieces, I'm just going to drop it in anyways. And our next observation, we can see immediately that we have, so I'll move this camera real quick here. Ooh, we have some gas creation. So why? That's a great observation. Why do we have gas creation? That should be part of our discussion. And as I back up here, let's see if we can see what happens to the color. So it's getting light. It's getting pretty. Oh, there's boom. We just got hit with a beautiful green. It's still going. It's still going. It's still going. We got some yellow. 
we have some really beautiful colors. So again, color changes. So those are great observations. Those are also going to be great things to discuss in our results. And I can see if you can see this or not. I got a nice green down low, uh, yellow up top. But it's a nice variance of color. So there we go. Now, after we add the Alka Seltzer tablet, um, we're going to carefully add. So this is where we're going to actually try. So in other labs, you're going to see that they just keep pouring it fully in, let it fully mix, and everything change colors. I do my lab a little differently. I like to try and keep the different colors in here, and we've actually been pretty successful at doing this. So what I'm going to look at doing here is adding some pellets. So here I have, I don't know how well you can see this. This is what solid sodium hydroxide looks like. It's like these solid pellets, and I can't tip it too much. Um, they almost look like little beads. And now it starts to look like they're sweating a little because they are very hygroscopic. That was a word that was in one of our discussions earlier, uh, which means it'll suck water right out of the atmosphere. But we're just going to go and bring drop these straight sodium hydroxide pellets in. Uh, normally, I would let that sit for a few minutes. I'm going to give it a short amount of time today just because I don't want it to take longer. Uh, and we're going to see what happens with this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is waste time by showing you my own invention, my stirring rod. Uh, this is a bad boy. It's just a coat hanger that I hooked on the end so I can agitate the bottom of this cylinder really well uh, and maybe not as much the rest. So hopefully this is enough to start dissolving if I go in here. If I start agitating, I can see some beautiful color in the bottom while hopefully maintaining the rest of the color up top. So again, there's an observation. So I have the solid sodium hydroxide pellets to the bottom, right? Why did the color change only occur at the bottom? That's for you to decide in your discussion. The last step in this, of course, is going to be to add the acetic acid. Now, I was not clever enough to leave myself enough room at the top. So I'm going to try and add the acid very slowly so it stays on top and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom here. Uh, with the amount of space I left here, the gravity is really going to do its part. So hopefully I don't go too crazy here. Uh, just see if I can add this couple drops at a time. Whoa, and then I go crazy. Yeah, that's a good job, Mr. Livy. So again, note the color changes. As I add in there, and you see some nice bright red staying with the acetic acid. We see that nice purple down below. There is a nice layer of blue, green, yellow in the middle. Um, of course, I was a little too aggressive with my acid, so that's not going to come across as well. Um, and so there's another observation. So why did the universal indicator turn red? And then we can discuss that. So that is going to be our whole lab report setup. So our introduction is we're just introducing all the chemicals or all the chemical reactions that we may run into in our lab. So we here we knew it was going to be an acid base. So we should introduce what is an acid, what is a base? What are the chemicals we're using? That is a very important introduction, right? So we should have four chemicals, acetic acid. Discuss what acetic acid is. Right? It's a weak acid. What does that mean that it's a weak acid? Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Discuss that. What does that mean that's a strong base? Universal indicator. Uh, so just what is it? Uh, how does it work? Real briefly, uh, Alka-Seltzer tablet. What is Alka-Seltzer? Why did it do what it does? Um, so those are your, again, I don't want anything crazy for an introduction. Maybe two or three sentences on each of those things bring it in. Then we're going to move on to our materials. Uh, our materials are going to be everything we used in the lab. As given per lab report, this is just a chance for us to add any changes we might have. Procedures. We're going to list all the procedures we went through. Maybe not the procedures that were on the list, but what we did. So if someone wants to recreate our lab to get the same results as us, they have the same procedures to follow. Uh, then we're going to get into uh, our results and observations. So again, you're going to put your 
results. Again, other labs will have more results. For this one, for your results, I want to see a picture drawn, a diagram drawn of the rainbow, the coloring of it. That will be our results, and the observations will be a nice list of the observations we observed. When we get to the final part of our lab report, it's going to be the discussion, and that's where, that is where we discuss our results. So basically, you should have various observations, and in your discussion, you are going to discuss each of those observations, like we were observing chemical changes, and we discuss why they happened. Um, so what I've told everyone to do, of course, is to write up the best lab report they can. Again, I'm not expecting solid gold. I'm trying to teach you how to write lab reports. So you will need to write one up the best you can, send it in. I will then correct it and I will drown it in red ink. I will send it back to you, at which point you can rewrite it. You send it back to me, I will probably drown it in red ink again, just a couple times, uh, until we get something that looks like a good lab report, decent lab report, and then I'll give you marks for that lab report. So as long as you go through the steps and get me the rough drafts, I can help you build it. Because this is our first lab report, I want this to be a good one, and I want you to be able to use this as an exemplar for the rest of the way through. Um, so I hope you stuck with me through 11 minutes of talking and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to let this go for about another five minutes and settle. Um, I'm not going to talk or say anything here, but fast forward to the end because I found that when you let this sit, it actually gets to be nicer. Uh, I don't know how well that's showing up in here, how bright that is. So here we go. So about five minutes of this just sitting here quietly. Fast forward to the end and see if the picture looks any better. And we'll call it quits there. Thank you very much.